Hello and welcome to the Book Bunch. My name is Sam. It is so great to have you guys here for another video. And I am so excited to bring you today's video because we are talking about the best series of all time, my new top series, favorite books, definitely Wing Feather Saga. This series by Andrew Peterson is absolutely phenomenal and I can't wait to get into it with you guys because it is just so, so good. So I hope that you enjoy this video and yeah, we'll get right to it. So the Wing Feather Saga, as you can see, is incredibly beautifully illustrated. It has just amazing covers. I love it so, so much. And it is just a beautiful book and a beautiful series. And it is just, it's just amazing, guys. I can't even put into words how amazing this series is, but I will try my very best for you. So I'm just going to start by talking about the actual books um, physically themselves, and then we'll go into the actual story. So this is what the paperback edition looks like of the first one. And then there is matching set of the four. It also has within the books these beautiful illustrations that give you a good idea of what's going on. They're not on every page, they're every like 100 pages or so. And yeah, they're just beautiful. I love them. They're so gorgeous and they really help you to visualize the story a bit better. They are aimed at teenagers, so that's why they're a bit more pretty, I guess, <laughs> because they need to capture the kids imaginations a bit better so I really like them I love the fact that they have the illustrations but it doesn't take away from the story in any way I also love the style of the illustrations I think they're really beautiful and I hope that if I ever write a book I can get an illustrator as good as this one because I love it so much they also have in them if I can find one on a page these little footnotes so some of them have footnotes at the bottom just to explain some of the weird language and everything because there's some fantastical words in there that are a bit made up and they also use it to reference other books that are written in this world and things which are very cool I really love it there is um appendices at the back which I will show you so there's an appendices um with just the extra little bits so like what their permission forms look like for things, various maps and creatures and stuff that I think is a really cool addition as well. It just really makes you feel like you're a part of this world that Andrew has created. And yeah, it's just beautiful. There's poems and songs throughout and different things. And it is just an action-packed adventure if I've ever read one. This series, I think, purely surpasses anything I have ever read because not only is it beautiful, well-written, fully fleshed out story that you just can't put down, but it has the most beautiful, heartbreaking, but joyful at the same time message that I've probably ever read in a novel format. So it is just wonderful. Um, so what is it about? What is the Wing Feather Saga all about? So it is set in a place called Here We Are, <laughs> which is a bit funny because I'll just read the um, first little bit for you because it explains um, a bit about the book and it also sets you up for the kind of feel of the book you're going to get. So if you like this, you think this is good, funny, you're going to love the rest of the book because it's all of a similar vein, even if it does get a bit more serious later on. So it, it basically says in the brief introduction to the world of Here We Are, it says the old stories tell that when the first person woke up on the first morning in the world where this tale takes place, he yawned, stretched and said to the first thing he saw, well, here we are. The man's name was Duane and the first thing he saw was a rock. Next to the rock, though, was a woman named Gladys, whom he would learn to get along with very well. In the many ages that followed, the first sentence was taught to children and their children's children and their children's parents, cousins, and so on until 
quite by accident all speaking creatures referred to the world around them as here we are <laughs> so it's quite funny i really like those little bits there is a mix of humor in this as well as some really serious dark tones that just it all balances it out i think i cried so many times reading this series it's not even funny both tears of joy and tears of sorrow because you get so connected to these characters and they are just put through absolute hell and I oh, I love it so much the ending is so beautiful so profound and just yeah so heartfelt I don't think I've ever read the ending of a book that I loved more and was so affected by it emotionally than this series gave me and Oh my goodness, I just can't even believe that this is Andrew's first books. Like, he had never written a book before. He's actually a songwriter, and he just felt this in his heart, and he wrote it down, and it is perfection. It really is. It is definitely five out of five stars for the whole series for me. But yes, so the story, I'll get back to that. So basically, it is set in, here we are, and there is a uh, set of siblings called the Igaby children and they their names are Jenna, Tink and Levi and they grow up in this little town called Glipwood. It's by the sea and it seems to be mostly wonderful except they're being terrorized by these things called the Fangs of Dang and they are these lizard-like humanoid creatures that are evil and they are ruled by the like evil presence of this book called Nag the Nameless and yes that is quite funny in itself because he is Nag but he is also apparently the Nameless and there is lots of little things like that like this first book is called The Dark Sea of Darkness different things I find it funny it is meant to be a little bit of a dad joke um in some of it just to give you a bit of a laugh um if you are a bit older and you're reading this but basically this series follows these children through these ridiculous perils and adventures that they have and it is non-stop like there is a few hundred pages here and there where they have like a bit of a breather and you think everything's kind of going okay and then something else gets thrown into the mix so it is a very action-packed adventure it is constantly you're on your toes and everything which I do really like there are some beautiful creatures and beautiful characters in this story that you learn to really love and feel for and it really talks about the I guess struggle that we all have as people against like the goodness and the evilness inside all of us and that constant struggle of how do you reconcile that? How do you come to peace with that? How do you feel voids in your own heart and different things like that? And it's got sacrifice and it's got love and it's got just everything that you need an epic tale to have. It is truly amazing. It does have a very strong Christian background throughout this book. It's not overtly obvious but it's kind of like the same vein as like Narnia and Lord of the Rings. It's there, but it's not so there that it's glaring you in the face. So it's very good. I really like it. It really actually made me think about where my heart is at and where I'm at. And I could relate to it so strongly in these characters. It was so well written. And yeah, so these kids are on this crazy adventure because they pretty much straight up in the first book find out that they're not necessarily who they thought they were and they end up being on the run throughout these books from this nag the nameless and he is pulling out all the stops to take them down and capture them and there's so many secrets in this that kind of unfold and all this lore that unfolds and I can't really tell you too much about the story apart from that because it is a bit spoilery. I will do a spoilery thing at the end. But yes, basically, better than Narnia, better than Lord of the Rings. It's a bit of a mix of the series of unfortunate events and the magic faraway tree kind of melded together. It's funny, it's witty, it's so well written, it's fast paced, it's just fun, and I loved it so much. I don't know if you can tell because I'm gushing over this book but <laughs> it's so so good and I really recommend it to 
everybody of all ages. It's so good. Um, you don't have to be a kid or a teenager or anything to get something out of it or to have a good time because I'm definitely not a teenager anymore and I am loving this and I can't wait till my daughter grows up and is old enough to experience this as well. I'm also really excited because they have announced that they're turning it into an animated series which is going to be perfect. I've never wanted something to like turn into a film more than this so it's very exciting. Um, yeah my biggest um, concern with this and really my only qualm is that the kids are quite young in this book. The youngest is nine and the eldest um, turns 13 in the book and there's three of them. So yeah they are quite young for what happens to them and how they react to situations. I can't really tell if that's like a problem or not it didn't really bother me but if you don't like really young kids being kind of thrown into peril just be aware of that because that is what happens they do have a grow a lot throughout the story I think there's great character development so by the end of it you almost don't realize that they are as young as they are because they do have to mature so fast because of what happens to them throughout the book but it is so, so good. I definitely recommend it. That is my non-spoilery take of the Wing Feather Saga for you. I definitely recommend reading it. Even if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you should pick it up because it's just so, so good. I'm sure you can tell by how excited I am about it. But for a more spoilery review, I'm going to get into that one now. So if you don't want it to be spoiled, please stop the video now. Have a great week. But I don't want to ruin it for you if you're going to read it because it is so good and you don't want it to be ruined. But yes, have fun. I'll see the rest of you guys <laughs> later. But yeah, so the spoiler version of the review of the Wing Feather Saga. Oh my goodness, guys, this series wrecked me so hard. It's not even funny. There are so many deaths in there that hit so hard. And when you find out that Esben is still alive and everything, like you always have that inkling like, oh, like no one saw him die. So like, what if he's whatever? But then when it actually like happens and it happens at such like a crucial point because neither the mother is like falling in love with somebody else because she's been like alone for the last nine years and has grieved her husband and thought he was dead and then all of a sudden he comes back to life but it's only for a, like a chapter in the book because he then gets killed and like that whole emotional roller coaster was so wild I can't believe that bit but I I don't know how I feel about it but I'm glad that they got to meet him and all of that. I kind of wish he hadn't have died, but that's just because I wish everyone could have lived. And the ending where Artem gets reunited with his true love, that was so beautiful. I loved that bit. I'm glad that he kind of finally found healing, even though he's probably still like on his journey to being fully healed like everybody. I'm glad that he at least got some happiness because it's not really his fault with, with what happened with Esben. I know he blames himself, but you can't, like, it was Esben's choice. And yeah, but that was crazy. And what Janet did at the end, oh my gosh, that wrecked me so hard. I wasn't expecting it because we were so close to the end and all the bad stuff was over. I wasn't expecting there to be that sacrifice right at the end. But then in the epilogue where they're like, we're going to go try at the first well, I was like, yes, please. But like, it doesn't like really tell you what happens, but like you have that hope. And I love that. It ended so beautifully, so well. And even if Jana like stays dead, dead, like, and the first well whole idea like doesn't work. I'm kind of okay with that because the sacrifice was done so well and it meant so much and it saved so many people and it was so beautiful and he was at peace and he's going to be with the maker and everybody wants to be with the maker. <laughs> I don't know about you, but being with the maker would be pretty great. And yeah, that was so beautiful. And I just, 
I love the wrestle that Janna had within himself with like his own jealousy and all of that kind of stuff towards the end where he was um, waiting for his brother to come back, for Cal to come back. And oh, I, it was so real to me because that is how it is. You have this internal struggle with yourself, all those bad thoughts that you have and the bad feelings you have. And then the good part of you is like, no, I don't want those feelings. And then other feelings take over and you get so lost within yourself and just to have God come down and be like, be at peace, like it's okay, rest in me, like that was so, so beautiful and I cried so much. I'm probably going to cry again thinking about it, but it was so beautiful and like everybody needs to hear this message. I feel like everybody does because it was so beautiful and so well done. I'm sorry, I'm crying now because it, it does, it hits you so hard in such a good way. And I've never read a series, especially a fictional series that is so impactful and so beautiful and so on point as well for just the truth of life. And <laughs> yeah, I just couldn't recommend this book highly enough to people of all ages because everybody needs to hear this. It is a timeless message, a timeless story, just like Lord of the Rings, just like Narnia. I hope this surpasses all faith points, all age groups, and that it just continues on from generation to generation. And I have no idea why this book doesn't have more hype because it definitely deserves it. It is extraordinary. I really wanna hear your thoughts about it, about what happened, about the different people. I feel so bad for Sarah after everything that she went through in the Fork Factory and she kind of lost her hope right at the end until she was taken to um, the Wing Feathers and got to see the Isle and everything. And I feel so bad for her because she thought she'd be able to go back to Janna and then Janna's like dead and oh, that is awful, but I I hope that he comes back alive just for her, for that, because she deserves happiness, and I hope that she finds that. But, yeah, I also love Leli's little love story, even though I think they're probably a bit too young to be professing marriage because they're only nine. I do think that was kind of beautiful and cute, and I like at the end how Cal uh, teases her for it. <laughs> I thought that was quite cute as well, and very true to the sibling relationship I love that I, I loved every part of this like every inch of this story felt real and fleshed out and they were people they weren't just characters they were people up to their sibling rivalries and their little fights but also how they come together and they help each other and the oh, the love was so real and I love it and I felt so bad for poor Naya like her story is just horrible and so sad and I feel so bad for her because she would be so heartbroken and so probably defeated after so much loss but I hope that she clings on to the maker and clings on to her children that she has left and her brother-in-law and that she does find happiness again because she really deserves it, that poor mother. As a mother myself now, I really felt bad <laughs> at the end with that whole thing because that would just be awful to have gone through that. She lost both her loves and then to lose her son, it would have been, oh, and her dad and her mum, obviously, that would have been awful. <laughs> poor Potter, oh my gosh. I'm glad that, like I said, I'm glad he went out the way he did because he was a pirate. Like he, the sea was part of him and he wanted to go out that way and I'm glad that he did. But it's also sad that he had to do that and that he had to sacrifice himself for everybody else. But I loved that as bittersweet as it was because it just made it so good. I don't know. It It made sense. It made you go, I don't know, you could almost breathe a sigh of relief for him because he didn't want to get older. You could see in the way he was described that 
old age was getting to him and just sitting around was getting to him and he wouldn't have wanted to necessarily survive the battle and just live out till he passed away like he went out how he wanted to and what made him happy and being in the sea which he loved as crazy as all that is and the whole bit with Jürgen oh my gosh that was so crazy and I was like screaming at the book like but that's why Leli was scared because he she knew he had that darkness he knew that it would go badly and it did and yeah it's just there's so much and Oog I loved him he was cool I loved the little troll he was awesome and I'm glad that he didn't die I was so upset when that happened and then I had that feeling that maybe he didn't because like he wasn't there and he wouldn't have turned to Ash because he wasn't a um fang so I'm glad that he he was good and I just can't believe that whole twist where it was like he found the well and used that and he didn't even know that it was just getting water and it was like ah oh, that was so good it was so good but Andrew if you ever see this review thank you for writing this this was just it was amazing in every facet and I just hope that you keep writing these stories and I hope that God puts more messages like this on your heart because you have a absolute gift from him to write these things and I am so grateful that you have written this for me to read and review and thank you for yeah just being a great author and for listening to that calling that God put on you because this is the best series ever you you nailed it it's brilliant so thank you I applaud you and I hope that maybe one day I'm lucky enough to meet you and talk with you because this was a real privilege so thank you and thank you all of you guys for watching this video I hope that you guys have a good one and I'll see you in the next one bye mm -hmm.